Kentucky's Egg Harbor Township's own Dave Schaller here on the Sports Bash 97.3 ESPN as we get a look at this card, USC 203. Schaller, holler, what's up? I'll tell you what, it's an exciting weekend, isn't it? We got USC 203, the debut of CM Punk, the beginning of the Carson Wentz era in Philadelphia. Uh, this is a great weekend for sports fans, and uh, I'm calling you from my uh, hotel room here in, in Cleveland overlooking the uh, sold-out Quicken Loans Arena for tomorrow night. It's going to be a fun one. Love it. I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to be watching it. Uh, the lady and I, she's, I got, I got to tell you from our segments, she's into these now. She'll tell me when are we, where are we going to go watch the USC card? So her and I are going to watch it tomorrow night. Shaller, I saw you in the middle. I saw you in the middle, the man in the middle again. Uh, tell us a little bit about the uh, main event. Steve Miocic is fighting in his hometown. So that should be pretty cool. Uh, this is a fantastic main event. Steve Miocic, arguably, uh, one of the fastest rising stars in our sport. His knockout of Fabrizio Verdum in May to uh, to capture the title was special and that he went to Fabrizio's hometown in Brazil and won the title. And now he gets to defend his title in his hometown of Cleveland against arguably the most decorated heavyweight striker in the history of combat sports, that being Alistair Overeem, a multiple-time world kickboxing champion. He's won titles in other organizations. And uh, five years to the week that he signed with the UFC, he finally gets the chance to cement his legacy by uh, potentially capturing the, the heavyweight title. This is a fantastic fight. I don't know how it makes it all five rounds. Both of these guys have absolute bombs in their hands. So uh, I think this is going to be a fight where you see uh, that textbook knockout. Yeah, and we're looking at, uh, you mentioned Stipe Miocic and uh, Overeem here. We got Verdum, who you mentioned. He's on this same card, Travis Brown. You're, you're wondering if uh, we see... Uh, Miocic and Verdun both win. Will that set them up for a rematch down the road? It very much could. You also have Cain Velasquez, who was uh, successful at UFC 200. I'll tell you what, of all the stare downs that I've done over the last few months, <laughs> uh, Tra Travis Brown and, and Fabricio was arguably the most tense. Those guys were drawing back and forth. There's a uh, an internet meme running around right now of me trying to uh, make cooler heads prevail against a six foot seven and six foot five heavyweight. So. Um, you know, in, in honor of Allen Iverson's induction into the Hall of Fame, I thought it was only appropriate that I throw my sub six foot body in between uh, some other big bodies and, and try to get to the glass, if you will. I don't, I don't know though. Your your Facebook, I mean your Twitter uh, cover photo there between Nate Diaz and obviously McGregor. I don't know. You'll top that one. I mean, you're right in the middle of maybe one of the biggest and best fights that uh, your organization has ever put out, but. Uh, you have maybe one of the more intriguing fights that your organization has ever put out from a guy who's never fought before. He's been all over the place uh, doing the, the, the media, uh, you know, car wash, if you will, and that's CM Punk, Phil Brooks, uh, taking on Mickey Gall. And uh, here's a guy who has gained fame because of his WWE background, but he uh, abruptly left the company to join yours, and Saturday night we'll finally see him. What should we expect? So in 2014, Mike, he walked out of his WWE contract at the Quicken Loans Arena. And now, tomorrow night, live on pay-per-view, he's back, this time as a UFC fighter. You know, he has spent much of the last two years working out at what I would consider kind of the Harvard or the Ivy League of MMA gyms with Duke Rufus in, uh, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Anthony Pettis, Tyron Woodley, Ben Askren, numerous world champions training at that gym. He's committed his life to this thing, had a chance to see him at our uh, – at our weigh-in procedure this morning, he made championship weight, 170 pounds, right on the nose. And he's fighting a guy in Mickey Gall, who at 2-0 and is a young prospect, 24 years old, is actually uh, just from uh, two hours uh, north of, uh, of where you're broadcasting from today. It's going to be a, a really, really intriguing fight. CM Punk is, is one of the most polarizing figures I've ever worked with in nearly a decade in the fight game. And uh, at 37 years old, he's, he's trying to defy the odds and show everyone that he can make this transition. I, I really admire what he's trying to do, uh, stepping into the octagon, taking on a young, hungry contender. This is going to be an interesting fight, Mike. Um, you just mentioned his age. What's the long-term goal? What's the long-term um, path for him? Well, as he'll tell you, he plans to fight out his contract. He has a multi-fight deal here in the UFC. Uh, from our perspective, we're going to see how it goes tomorrow night. Um, he's been matched up with somebody who has the appropriate level of experience for, for Phil, who's making his debut. Um, and we're going to see how it goes. He's put in the work. 
He's done everything the right way. He's had a couple of injury setbacks, but from a mentality perspective, like I said to you, Mike, I've been around fighters for most of my adult life. Um, he, he's taken this incredibly serious, and I can tell that he's dialed in. So tomorrow night, the cage door will close, and uh, under the bright lights here in Cleveland, we're going to see if he can get it done. Mickey Gall says he's going to send him back to WWE. Um, obviously, they got to hype it up, but if he loses, do we see – Phil Brooks slash CM Punk again? You know, I, my gut says yes. My gut says yes. With the amount of time, energy, and resources he's put into developing his mixed martial arts skill set, my, my gut says yes. Uh, but let's see how the fight goes tomorrow night. Again, he's made all the preparations. He's been uh, you know, a little bit subdued in terms of what the WWE audience is used to hearing from him. But yes. I would just match that by telling you he's, he's laser focused and uh i'm gonna flip this back on you what happens if he goes out there tomorrow night and knocks out mickey gall what type of buzz will this guy generate for himself in this sport if he goes out there and delivers i i I know it's a fair question i'm very intrigued and you just said something that is right he his character gained the popularity dave that it got almost like a cult-like following because of his mic work yes he was very skilled in the ring but there's a lot of skilled guys in a WWE ring. He gained the fame because he was a wizard on the mic, and yep. he's not displaying that right now in this in this you know venture for him. Well, and I think it's because he's he's untested and he's unproven in this in this side of the game. But uh, he's one of the most confident individuals I've ever come across. And make no mistake, I don't mean cocky. I mean confident. He's He's been very, very humble, and despite some of the stories that you read about how it ended in professional wrestling, he's been a, a role model citizen to deal with here. But if he wins and he gets that confidence of a professional mixed martial arts victory, um, I believe he calls them pipe bombs. I believe we'll see huh. some uh, verbal pipe bombs from him in his next fight. He's just, uh, I think he's trying to find his bearings, and I think we all have to respect that. Dave Schaller is with us. Any sense at all that he would go back or misses that that wwe life i can tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt because i've asked him uh he, he doesn't miss it um and, and i don't think he goes back i think he spent you know upwards of 10 plus years on the road traveling the globe per, you know in pro wrestling i still think he very much appreciates the art and the sport behind pro wrestling but what I like about Phil is he's still got aspirations to do other things. You know, he's become a very, very successful comic book writer for Marvel. He's dabbled in some acting ventures. He obviously is now a mixed martial artist. He has other aspirations outside of the squared circle. Um, so, no, I, I don't anticipate him going back. But, you know, that, that's a very, very enticing business. We've seen other wrestlers retire before and go back. But uh, you asked me, you put me on the spot, and my gut says, no, I don't, I don't see him going back. Hey, Dave, it's uh, Pete Thompson. I know that out here, we know that fight fans, there are a lot of fight fans in Ohio, especially based off of Kelly Pavlik and the Youngstown crowd that used to come out to see Kelly Pavlik box in Atlantic City. That said, Cleveland's a slightly little bit bigger than Youngstown. Tell me what the hype and the atmosphere and the, the crowd's going to be like for this uh, UFC 203. Well, this, this city's still buzzing from the championship that LeBron James brought to Cleveland. It, it's just palpable. Um, the energy, the excitement, having Stipe Miocic, who's a, a very well-documented athlete here, also a firefighter. Um, so he's well-known in this community. The buzz in this city is, is like a big Vegas fight, Pete, if that makes sense. And, and I remember the days of Kelly Pavlik fighting in Atlantic City. It felt like that. The energy, um, just the excitement. And that little air of unpredictability, which makes the fight game so great. Uh, it's going to be exciting. The Quicken Loans Arena is among the most beautiful I've seen in, in my tour of, of arenas in the last 10 years. And uh, to answer your question directly, I think tomorrow night is going to be one of those pressure cookers. And I think when CM Punk makes that walk, when Stipe Miocic makes that walk to the octagon, it's going to be something special. Well, we'd be remiss. It's the first Friday of high school football tonight, so we, you know, want our game of the week, game of the week's back on TV40. We got coverage here on 97.3 ESPN. Uh, Millville hosts EHT tonight. You got a pick there? Oh, wow, come on. Of course I got a pick. It's going to be those EHT Eagles. And, and you know what? I give a lot of credit to you guys for continuing to support high school sports. You know, not long ago, there was a guy named Pete Thompson who helped discover Mike Trout. And he was covering Mike Trout before he was Mike Trout. And I just think those are the type of stories that, that build us as a community. And uh, I'm rooting for my guys in EHT. 
they got a tough Millville team they'll be playing tonight, but uh, it, it's fun. This is a fun time of year. You got pro football back, you got the high school sports back, you got big fights on TV. It's just a, uh, a great time. And living in Vegas now and having grown up in South Jersey, uh, it'll be nice to see a little fall weather. Dave Shaw, the VP of UFC. It's UFC 203 tomorrow night in Cleveland, the debut of CM Punk and a great card. You're too kind, Dave. I'll send you that check in the mail. Thank you for the plug. Yeah, I I believe we agreed on $25. <laughs> That's <laughs> Twenty-five bucks. <laughs> it's in right. my budget. It's uh, Dave Schaller. Uh, don't forget UFC two hundred three. Thanks, Dave. Take care, bud. Take care, Thanks, bud. guys. Have a great weekend.